An average of 200 countries participate at the Olympics and Paralympics in approximately 30 different sports. Over 1000 medals are to be won at each of these events. Since the first Olympics in the modern era of uh, 1896, India has won 28 medals in total at the Olympics and 12 medals at the Paralympics. The most celebrated Olympic athlete of all times is Michael Phelps with 28 medals. India has one individual gold medal in shooting of Abhinav Bindra in 2008. So why can't a country of over 1.3 billion people win medals? It is something for us to think about, right? I am Deepti Bhopaya and I was born and brought up in Bangalore. But my family, um, we hail from Coorg in Karnataka. Coorg is a hilly coffee growing region and is also known as the Scotland of India. The love of the Coorg people for sport is well documented. I grew up witnessing the Kodava Hockey Festival, uh, which is the largest uh, hockey festival in the world, made up of over 300 teams uh, of people like you and me who participate. My family is no exception. My father is a tennis player and my mother played hockey during her college days and was also a mountaineer. In fact, even today, they continue to play tennis every morning. My sister and I too had to continue the family tradition and played multiple sports throughout our school days while I was in Baldwin Girls and in my college at Mount Carmel. I represented my state of Karnataka in tennis and the Bangalore University in basketball. Sport has always been a part of my life for as long as I can remember. It has given me some of life's fondest memories and played a huge role in shaping the person I am today. I always wanted to be an athlete and pursue sport as a career, but was and you know ended up being shunted down a more conventional path as sport was never a career choice 15 years ago. I got an MBA, I joined HSBC where I worked as a wealth advisor and trainer for close to 6 years. My 6 years at the bank was a roller coaster. The stock markets, investments, mutual funds, insurance, it taught me a lot about how to make money for my clients and build amazing relationships. However, I would wake up every day with no real purpose and I was sure I was never going to find long term fulfillment in banking. Contributing to sport always stayed in the back of my mind. There was one incident that changed the course of my career and made me realize my true calling. Back in 2012, we had gone out as a team to celebrate a wonderful sales month. Loud music, lots of talking, screaming across the tables and in the corner of the bar on TV, the 2012 London Olympic Games was being broadcasted on television. In between all this chaos, the subject moved to Olympics. As I was glued to my screen, my colleagues kept harping on about how I must not waste a fun evening watching, watching the Olympics, as we Indians could never excel at the biggest stage. We simply don't have it in us. We've heard all this many times and we've brushed it off or smiled wryly in agreement. Sometimes we've even said similar things ourselves, right? Somehow that day, these statements bothered me. I could hardly sleep at night. I could not possibly believe that we, uh, a country of 1.3 billion people, cannot find talented people who excel at sports. We have been shining in practically every walk of life. So why not sport? I reflected intensely on my earlier decision that saw me choosing a conventional path from sport. This introspection was timely and helped me realize where my true passion lay. To this day, I am very grateful to all those comments made by my colleagues. I decided to give up my lucrative corporate career and fancy designation to follow my heart, to use the skills and drive I had to get involved in Indian sport and to help talented athletes achieve their full potential. After quitting my job at HSBC, I joined Go Sports Foundation, an organization with the vision of empowering India's future Olympians and Paralympians when we started 
and today our attempt is to enable athletes in their quest for sports excellence. We are using sports as a vehicle for social change. We are promoting inclusion, diversity, empowerment, all of this through our athlete development programs. Time is a crucial factor in realizing our vision. Our work is premised on the belief that excellence can only be achieved when athletes are provided with the right support at the right time. It is rare to find like-minded individuals and teams who believe wholeheartedly in the potential of sport. And the idea hugely resonated with me. I was incredibly fortunate to work with my trustees, mentors, experts to lead a team of very passionate individuals who shared my love for sport. I'm also blessed to work with sporting legends like Rahul Dravid, Abhinav Bindra, Pulela Gopichand, who have devoted their immense know-how and advice to the foundation to help take Indian sport forward. When I look back at my decision to not pursue sport as an athlete, I believe every athlete has been faced with this unfair, cruel choice at some point in their life. They end up dropping out due to a lack of opportunities, uh, family and financial support, training difficulty, um, difficulty in managing academics and high performance needs. And the list goes on. To give you some perspective, close to 82% of athletes drop out of competitive sports between the age group of 15 and 18. And these rates are much higher for girls as well. I do believe that we have immense talent as a nation and we have the ability to become champions and compete with the best in the world. So our team's goal is to mainly focus and provide timely support, retain the talent that we know exists, develop an ecosystem that is athlete-centric and supportive, and to make sure that at the time of the decision, the athlete is confident that sports can be their primary and natural career choice. Through our work and backing from all our donors and partners over the last decade and as we move along, we at the foundation have been part of the journeys of some of India's most talented athletes and our attempt is to nurture and support them to achieve their best potential. The program has supported over 200 athletes and have produced 17 Olympians and Paralympians in the last 13 years. Yes. It does take a long time to nurture talent. Go Sports Foundation has given a platform to trailblazers. Given India many firsts, Deepa Karmakar, the first ever gymnast to make an Olympic final. Deepa Malik, the first ever female Paralympian to win a medal for India. Kidambi Srikant, his career best ranking of world number one. Bhavani Devi, the first ever Indian fencer to be in contention for Olympic participation. Our athletes have broken many, many barriers to get to where they are today and have become role models, inspiring the younger generation to dream big. They inspire me personally and their stories drive me to do more. I know that many, many more such future champions exist with untapped talent and potential just waiting to be uncovered. I am confident that with consistent support and all key stakeholders working together, which has already started happening, we will surely start winning and seeing India on the world sporting map. I had one of the most unique opportunities to hear the national anthem at the Rio Paralympics not once, but twice. It was one of the best moments of my life, a feeling of joy and pride with tears running down my cheeks while witnessing the Paralympics and seeing the Indian flag flying high with the entire stadium standing with rapt attention is a memory that will never go away from my mind. We surely were witnessing the tide turning on the Indian Paralympic movement. I also keep circling back to the dilemma of pursuing academics or sport. Unfortunately, it is an either-or choice. I have faced this myself and I know many future Olympians, Paralympians, young athletes have also been confronted with the same question. Unable to cope up with the demand of their academic curriculum, a lot of them have had to drop out of sport or severely jeopardize their sporting career. It is a devastatingly difficult choice to make at any age even worse when one is so young and full of energy and passion for sport.
To address this problem, I had the honor of being part of the committee of the Sports Ministry under the guidance of the Honorable Sports Minister Kiran Rijiju to create a National Sports Education Board which when created will eventually help and assist student athletes to manage their sport and academic activities more efficiently and always have a backup irrespective of what they choose in their future years. I was able to go back to my roots while making the film Hockey in My Blood about the Kodava Hockey Festival. It celebrated the union of sport and community. It was a surreal experience for me to go back to my own community which has contributed so many players to the Indian hockey team over the years and see how sport continues to grow and shape our identity. While I had my family's support, my friends and colleagues were quite skeptical about my decision. As I have now stepped into my ninth year of working in Indian sport, I can safely and happily say it was the best decision of my life. All of this came together when we were awarded the Rashtriya Khel Protsahan Puraskar by the Honorable President of India. Sitting in the hallowed chambers of the Rashtrapati Bhavan, surrounded by the cream of sporting talent in India and recognizing that we were being awarded with them, all of my decisions to follow my heart suddenly made sense to me. Sport is a very powerful medium. It has the power to bring people together and to inspire. These values inculcated in me through sport have somewhat influenced everything that I do. When I look back at the milestones and experiences that have impacted my life, I keep coming back to time. When I made the decision of moving from banking to sport, I did not know how things would pan out. These um, windows and opportunities in one's lives are limited and might come up only very few times. But I followed my instinct and made the decision when the time felt right and I trusted that things will eventually fall in place. I appreciate my present, but I also eagerly look forward to what the future holds. Only time will tell how we can grow and impact others. I believe we must not be limited or held back from following what we truly believe in. I will leave you with one more quote that has become my motto in most things that I do. Mahatma Gandhi's quote was quite extensive. But it boils down to the version we often hear, which is to be the change you wish to see in the world. I urge everyone listening to have the courage to follow that inner voice. We all have it. We have it from our earliest days on the planet. Don't let it go quiet or be overwhelmed by the noise uh, around us. Be brave, be open, be vulnerable and always attempt to live your truth. Thank you very much.